Hello, hello, good people. This is your guy, Mr. Educated, Mr. Communicated, Mr. Free Thinker, coming back at you live once again from the Lone Star State on this post Thanksgiving day with another edition of the Media Mike Speaks. All right, good people. One of my subscribers sent me this story just in case you did or did not know about this. This woman, as you saw in the thumbnail, I'm hoping is going to prison. Her name, former district attorney Jackie Johnson. Now, at the time of the Ahmaud Arbery's case, she was the DA. Now, we're going to get to this story because one of my subscribers said, have you seen this? And I said, no. So I dug a little deeper after the article was sent to me. So I decided to do the story on this. And the plot continues. The men convicted of killing Ahmaud Arbery are not, on, are not the only ones facing prison time for the February 2020 murder. As I stated earlier, as you see here, picture in the court on the far right, former Georgia District Attorney Jackie Johnson, who was arrested for her role in delaying justice for the black man, I don't know why they say black man, for, they should have just said, for Ahmaud Arbery who was chased and killed while running through a mostly white neighborhood near Brunswick, Georgia. Now, we all know the outcome here at this point for those three individuals, which we're going to talk about in a minute, because they have been tried and convicted and most likely are going to prison for a very, very long time. I don't know if they ever get out. Now, let's continue here with this story. According to a grand jury indictment, Johnson violated her oath by showing favor and affection to Gregory Michael and failing to treat Aubrey and his family fairly with dignity. It also says she obstructed police by directing that Travis McMichael should not be placed under arrest, unquote. Johnson also lost her re-election bid last November because of the Aubrey case. Yeah, she was going to lose that. Obstruction of justice actually is what she did. It took more than two months after Aubrey's killing for arrest to be made. His families and supporters have called for Johnson to be penalized for what she did. Now, we're going to talk about here how all this transpired. Now, Greg Gregory McMichael, as you see here to the to right, right here, had worked in Johnson's office in Glen County as an investigator up until 2019 and was a former police officer. McMichael reportedly called Johnson after the murder leaving a message seeking advice. This is where the ball was severely dropped, good people. Let me quote this here. He calls, he says, Jackie, this is Greg. Could you call me as soon as possible? As soon as you possibly can. I don't want to misquote. I've been involved in a shooting and I need some advice right away. Could you please call me as soon as you possibly can? Thanks, bye, unquote. Now, Johnson has denied any wrongdoing at the time she did, saying she recused her office from the case immediately because of her relationship with McMichael. Now, Georgia Attorney General Chris Carr launched a grand jury in Georgia GBI, the Georgia Bureau of Investigations, into her actions. Carr announced the indictment on September 2nd. Well, see, well, Johnson, you know, when she said she denied any wrongdoing, how are you going to do that? You sat on this case for two months. That's what they're talking about. You sat on this. And not only that, not only that, you turned around and said that they didn't do, didn't do anything wrong. Here's the report, good people. Look at it. How are you going to say you deny any wrongdoing? How can you recuse yourself when you wrote up the report saying they didn't do anything wrong? No crime was committed. Lady, please. Now, Johnson was arrested for violation of oath of a public officer and obstruction and hindering a law enforcement officer on September 8th. She was released on $10,000 bond. Johnson will face one to five years if convicted for violating her oath and up to one year in prison for hindering law enforcement. I don't know if she's probably going to do that. I really don't know. Um, I'm hoping she does something, but one to five, I mean, hey, it may be probation here on this one. Now, the GBI is also investigating another former top law enforcement official's mishandling of Arbery's case, Waycross District Attorney George Barnhill, 
who told the Glen County Police Department there was insufficient probable cause to issue arrest warrants for the men accused in his killing because they were attempting to detain Arbery for a citizen's arrest. Barnhill recused himself from the case after facing pressure from Arbery's mother. Barnhill's son had worked in Johnson's office with Gregory McMichael, so they all knew each other. So we all know how this transpired, people. You know, both the McMichaels and that gentleman, Brian Williams, as you saw the photo, he's the first one on the left, were following in hot pursuit, what they thought was a burglar suspect, which had no proof at all. They cornered the young man and a tussle broke out, which you saw Mr. Arbery going for the shotgun, if I'm not mistaken, or the rifle, but I believe it was a shotgun. And one of the, one of the McMichaels wound up shooting him fatally twice. I think three shots were fired, but I know they probably landed twice. And then he stumbled away and collapsed, and was later pronounced dead. Now, I do believe what tanked this was that the fact that they had no evidence or proof that he had done anything, number one. Number two, you call yourself making a citizen's arrest on what? Because he hadn't done anything? He was, just, he was just running or jogging, it doesn't matter. You had no business stopping this, following this man and stopping him. The only thing I don't like about this is uh, Mr. Arbery when he charged the man trying to take the gun away. Because I wanted this young man to live. I am pro-life. I don't like the fact that he lost his life by challenging those men. Even though they were wrong. They were flat out wrong. But I want people to live instead of getting shot like that and, and dying on the side of the road. That's not good. But those young men did not have to actually shoot him. They didn't. They could have pulled back, fired the gun in the air. A lot of things they could have done. But they didn't have to do that. That's what really did it. There's no cause at all to follow this man. And you were armed on top of that. So. But they had never witnessed Mr. Arbery was stealing anything. And they did not call the police before chasing him. And that did it too. They didn't even call the police. The, the, the best thing they could have done was just call the police and say, hey, we got a young man running. He's heading westbound. Could you come check it out? That's all they had to do if they were that concerned. Because he hadn't done anything wrong. But I hope this witch gets some time. Because you see good people in the world of law enforcement, just like any other profession, you have people who stick together. And sometimes that's a part of the problem. You see, when you have people who refused to hold people accountable. This breeds corruption. They took an oath. But as you can see, there are certain people who do not take that oath seriously. Now, I do not feel sorry for this, for this woman. And I believe she should never have been elected to office. But she was. Things that make you go, hmm. But I guess it's all right because it's all white. Shout out to comedian Chris Rock for that one. So let me know what you think about this and feel free to leave your comments in the comment section below. So until next time, the media mic is back. This is your guy, Mr. Educator, Mr. Communicator, Mr. Free Thinker. Subscribe, share, and like to keep me rocking on the mic. Have a good night.